Today we are going to spend some time on the blood of redemption. And if you don't understand and have a revelation of the blood and the work of redemption that was done on the cross of Calvary, you will not experience true freedom and true fearlessness. In Isaiah 53, we look at the blood of redemption that refers to the stripes of Jesus and on the back of Jesus. And it says in verse 5, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Peter says later on, by his stripes you were healed. Why? Because Peter came after the cross and Isaiah was before the cross. So we see that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you and I receive healing. So we need to understand that the forgiveness of sin, uh, which is the work of redemption, and healing goes hand in hand. So the full work of redemption deals with the forgiveness of our sin, and it deals with the healing of our bodies, and the healing of our hearts, and healing in our whole lives. So we see how sin affects our bodies. Sin affects our, our whole life. Uh, fear affects our bodies. Uh, we see that stress affects our bodies. And we read it in Psalm 32 verse 3 that says, When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the draught of summer. Proverbs 17 verse 22 says, A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Psalm 38 verse 3 says, There is no soundness in my flesh because of your anger, nor any health in my bones because of my sin. So I want you to understand just because you're sick doesn't mean that you did something bad, but we need to get an overall understanding that when there is sin within our lives, it does affect our overall health in who we are and also in our physical bodies. And when we deal with healing, we also need to deal with sin within our lives because we all suffer from the incurable disease of sin. And that is a fact. All of us like pointing finger, like making ourselves look good. And therefore, we look at everybody else and maybe pointing finger at them so that you can look good. But Jeremiah 17 verse 9 come and he says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And this word is derived from the Hebrew word and name of Jacob. And we know that Jacob, when he was born, that he grabbed his, his brother's heel by the hand, but still he wasn't born first. And we see in his whole life, he was dealing and wheeling and hustling, and he was trying to see how he can do one over, right? And we see that this is why his name, uh, uh, Jacob, means supplanter, somebody that trips somebody, somebody who is slippery and sneaky. This is what it means, uh, being sly and polluted, slippery, sneaky. And the Bible talks about this, that we are having our own agenda. And that is why he says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And NIV translation says the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. The message says the heart is hopelessly dark and deceitful. A puzzle that no one can figure out. Who can figure out his or her heart? And it's true because the one day you're like this and the other day you are like that, right? And you can see that your heart can go at any time. At any time, proud and haftiness can come within your heart. And maybe even you think you've got it all together and you were at a time at your life where you were wicked and you did evil things, but now you came to the Lord, now you are a Christian. But you, do you know that even as a Christian, that our hearts can deceive us? That even as a Christian, your heart can be deceitful and sly, always trying to make a plan, always getting everything according to your agenda, something that you want? And so he is asking, how can we trust our own heart? He's not even talking about somebody else's heart. He's talking about our own heart. And he says it is deceitful, deceitful in the sense that we always have our own agenda. We want what we want. We want what we can get. And all of us can be deceitful, isn't that? It doesn't matter who you are. At the end of the day, any heart can go wrong at any time. And therefore, that is why we need to have a revelation of the blood of Jesus. That is why we need to apply the blood, that redemptive blood of the Lord Jesus Christ 
every day, day after day, over and over again within our lives, constantly checking our hearts and seeing if our hearts are still pure. Now, Proverbs 28 verse 26 says, He who trusts in his own heart is a fool. So you have a false confidence that you've got what it takes, that you are all right, everything is in order. And even sometimes you sound big in front of other people. But how is it really going with your heart? And that verse further says, he says, He who trusts in his own heart is a fool, but whoever walks wisely will be delivered. The message says, if you think you know it all, you're a fool for sure. Real survivors learn wisdom from others. And this is where you many times find people that says, don't tell me what to do. I know what to do, right? Because we are working out our own righteousness. We have got our own little list that we tick and say, I'll do this and I do this and I do this and therefore I'm a good person. Good based on what? Who defines goodness in the first place? And therefore you and I always need to go back to the Bible because that is an absolute within our lives. And in Jeremiah 17 verses 10 in the message translation, he says, But I, God, search the heart and examine the mind. I get to the heart of the human. I get to the root of things. I treat them as they really are, not as they pretend to be. And this is once again why you and I need to understand and have a godly per perspective of the righteousness of of God, of the justice of God. This is why we need to get to the word of God. See, if you think that you are okay, if you think you've got it all together, you are in trouble. You need to get to the word of God each and every single day of your life. You cannot judge yourself by yourself. You need to get to the word of God. You need to have an absolute in your life. You need to let the word of God come in your heart and examine your heart for who you really are. Because when there is sin within your life, it affects your life. It affects your body. It affects your health. And therefore today we are going to look at just two declarations and confessions of the blood of redemption within our lives. And the first redemption or confession is said with me, by the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed from the power of the enemy. And we see this in Ephesians 1 verse 7. It says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So being redeemed means you are being bought back. Our lives have been bought back. Adam and Eve have sold us out. The whole of humanity has been contaminated by sin because they sold us out to sin. But Jesus came to pay the price. That redeemed, it means to be liberated, uh, a possession or, or a person that is liberated to set loose, to set free. In other words, I'm in prison, I am in chains. And now somebody comes and they pay, pay the fine or they pay the ransom, whatever it is, that which I could not pay. I could not afford it. I did not have the money. I was in chains. I was bound. And that person, that somebody came and in exchange, he, he, he gave a ransom. He paid in exchange so that I could uh, be released, that they could take off the chains off of me and open the prison doors and therefore I am now a free woman. And this is what it means to be ransomed. It means to buy back and then to lose. And the term is for freeing someone from slavery, freeing them from a prison. And that is what Jesus came and do for, did for you and me through the redemptive work of his blood. Matthew 20 verse 28 says, and he gave his life as a ransom for many. Hebrews 2 verse 14 says, because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. So he came, he left everything, he became human, he lived on this earth, never sinning in his life, he was innocent, but then he took all of our sin. He died on the cross of Calvary for our sin. And now in Romans 6 verse 6 it says, we know that our sinful selves, our old sinful selves, were crucified with Christ so that sin, listen to this, might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. We are no longer slaves to sin. The power of the devil has been defeated 
through Jesus Christ. The power of the enemy is destroyed through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. He conquered. He conquered death. He conquered sin. And therefore you and I can walk in freedom. And we are no longer slaves to sin. And this is why it comes in John, John 3 verse 16. It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. You can be free because the price has been paid through Jesus Christ. So I want you to make this confession with me. Say with me, by the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed from the power of the enemy. Say again, by the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed from the power of the enemy. Say with me, I've been rescued from the dominion of darkness and brought into the kingdom of Jesus, the Son of God. Say with me again, by the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed from the power of the enemy. So the devil has no right over your love. He has no say over your love. The price has been paid. You do not have to pay the price anymore. And therefore, if you do not have a revelation and an understanding of the redemptive work of this blood in your life, you will not have vision in your life and you will not live a purposeful life. But then we see the second confession of redemption is a fact that Jesus has forgiven our sin. And this is the same verse, Ephesians 1 verse 7. In Him we have redemption through His blood and the forgiveness of sin. Say with me, by the blood of Jesus, I am forgiven of all my sin. Say again, by the blood of Jesus, I am forgiven of all my sin. See, this is through the stripes on the back of Jesus. We receive forgiveness. And what did I say? Remember that forgiveness and healing goes hand in hand. Forgiveness is sin that deals with the heart and healing is for sickness that deals with the body. So it starts with the heart, but the heart affects the body. So the forgiveness of sin is the heart and the healing of sickness is the body. Listen to Psalm 103 verse 3. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Jeremiah 31 verse 34. For I will glorify Oh, sorry, for I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. I will forgive their iniquity and their sin I will remember no more. So how does God forgive? He forgives by remembering it no more. Remembering the sin no more. So let's look at 1 John 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we do what? If we confess and it is not well Lord if I have sinned what do you mean if you everyone has sinned and we all fall short from the glory of God and you know what if you and I don't own up then God cannot do something within our lives it is not if it is Lord come and search my heart because either uh, if you look at the motives of your own heart it is either for your own thing but if you have a revelation of who God is and what is done on the cross then you have an overflowing within your life to give and you can just give and give and give why because of what God has done within your life because of the goodness of God that is within your life and therefore, uh, we have to confess our sins. We have to search our hearts. We have to check our motives. Why am I doing this? Am I hustling? Am I pushing my own thing here? Or am I here to really be a blessing in the lives of my family, a blessing at my workplace, a blessing in the ministry in our church, a blessing for people in our nation out there? And therefore, he says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you know what? Just means that God has a legal right to forgive you. God has a legal right to forgive you right now. And he has the heart. He wants to. He's faithful. He's loyal. He's committed. He wants to. He's able. And God has the right to forgive us of all our sin and to cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. But you know what? There is no forgiveness of our sin unless we acknowledge our sin. There's no forgiveness without the acknowledgement that you have missed it. So you can be full of your self-righteousness, but you know you being right is overrated. You being right all the time hurts other people. You being right hurts your marriage. You being right all the time hurts your children. You need now to cover yourself and being right all the time. No. You need the righteousness of God in Christ. And how do we get that righteousness? Not through being right, 
not through our good works, but only by faith in the blood of Jesus, what he has done. Nothing you can do can get that. It's only faith in the blood of Jesus. And God wants to do a perfect work within your life. Say with me, by the blood of Jesus, I'm redeemed from the power of the enemy. By the blood of Jesus, I'm forgiven of all my sin. And therefore, I want to encourage you today, if you need healing within your life, start asking to look at your heart. Where is their unforgiveness? Where is their bitterness? Where is their low self-esteem? Not believing in the work that God is doing in your life. I'm not good enough. Then you're not believing in God. Come get to God and say, Lord, forgive me. Uh, being fearful for the future, in other words, not trusting in God. And come to God today and say, Lord, I need you to search my heart. I confess of all my sin. And then once you confess and you repent it and you turn away from that, and you turn towards Jesus, start reading your Bible, start praying, get involved in a church, get to God. You can't do this on your own. Get a mentor to teach you so that you can become all that God has called you to be, that you can live a life where you are healed and complete and whole. Go and do what I just said to you right now. Do the instructions, do the word and you will experience a breakthrough and the healing and the redemption that the enemy has no power, sin has no power over your life anymore because of the blood of Jesus. Isn't that incredible? God bless you.